Chapter 20. Out. Eric sat at the far end of the table during lunch. He had moved a seat away from Griffin after that business with Helen Beck in the playground. Eric sensed that something was up. Not by how people looked at him. No, that wasn't it. But how they didn't look at him. Griffin, Cody, all those guys. It was as if Eric no longer existed. He was relieved when the students were allowed to head outside for recess. He felt worked up and edgy. His head a jangle of different thoughts, all of them focused on Griffin. So Eric drifted around the schoolyard, half looking for Mary. She was alone, like him. What's going on? he asked. Mary turned her head and stared. Eric followed her eyes and saw Chantel Williams standing with a couple of other girls. Chantel was crying, her body heaving while the other girls tried to console her. They got her, huh? Didn't you see it? Mary asked. Eric had not. Alexis and the others posted a page on the web. They sent emails out to a ton of people, linking to the page. It had all these horrible pictures of Chantel on it, and it read, Ten reasons was why Chantel Williams is a fat... Mary didn't finish the sentence. She just swallowed in bewilderment, glanced around like someone who had lost her way. Does she know who did it? There was no reaction on Mary's face, just a flicker in her eyes. The school knows. The resource officer, Mrs. Goldsworthy, he knows. Eric watched her closely. You told? I'm standing here alone, aren't I? Mary said. There was a catch in her voice. You're not alone, Eric corrected her. Sorry, but you know what I mean. But Eric could see that Mary was right. Even though she... He stood beside her, inches away. She was isolated and alone. Mary wasn't in anymore. She had been pushed out. Eric glanced across the schoolyard and saw a curious partnership. There was Griffin Connolly walking along in close conversation with David Hollenbeck. They were set apart from everyone else, just two boys walking, hanging out. Griffin was nodding, listening. David seemed to be doing all the talking. Strange. Mary took a deep breath. I'm going to talk to her. Chantel? Mary nodded. I have to. So once again, Eric found himself at loose end. More out of habit than anything else. He joined a loose cluster of usual suspects. Drew P., Sinjay, Will Hakim, a few others, inspired by Mary's stand against her friends. Eric abruptly asked, Why do we let him get away with it? What? Bullies, Eric said. He was thinking about the presentation Mr. Floyd gave to their science class of Chantel Williams and David Hallenbeck. Why do we stand around and let it happen? They looked at Eric as if a yellow daffodil had sprouted from the top of his head. Dude, we're talking about the NFL, Drew P. said. Hakeem said that this is going to be the Jets year. Pat Daly laughed. Hakeem always thinks it's going to be a Jets year. And this year, I'm finally going to be right, Hakeem bellowed, wagging a finger, flashing a toothy smile. I mean it, Eric persisted, refusing to be dragged off topic. Like the other day, with Griffin and David, why didn't we do anything to stop it? The mood of the group changed, grew quiet and uncomfortable. A few sets of eyes looked away, perhaps searching for Cody and Griffin. Well, what about it? Hakeem? The thick bodied, dark-skinned boy stared at Eric. He smiled, lifted up his hands. My parents tell me to stay out of it, he admitted. I don't want any trouble. Helen Beck is a loser, Drew P. interjected. You know how annoying he is, Eric. That kid deserves to be roughed a little uh, now and then. And it's like he asks for it. Please, sir, may I have another? Marshall Jenkins joked in a whiny voice. Most of the boys laughed, nodding in agreement. Eric noticed that Pat Daly wasn't laughing. What about you, Pat? Eric asked. Pat swallowed, looked at the ground. Even if, let's say, maybe you saw something that seemed a little harsh, he tentatively began. What if you did say something? You'd get your butt kicked the next day. It's not worth it, another commented. Besides, who are you going to tell? Marshall asked. The principal? Mrs. Morse can't do anything. What about Officer Godsworthy? Eric wondered. No way, I'd never rat someone out. 
Sinjay stated, especially not to a rent-a-cop. Eric, listen to me, okay? You've got to lighten up, Droopy advised. Why make such a big deal out of it? Okay, a few little things have happened. There's always going to be some guys who take a pounding. That's life. What do they call it in science? Natural selection, he pronounced. Cody joined the group, stood close to Eric, practically breathing in his ear. Cody didn't say a word, but he listened hard, his body coiled, leaning in on the balls of his feet like an unspoken threat. Eric shook his head. No, Droop. I don't think that's a fair... Hey, guys, what are you talking about? It was Griffin Connolly. His tone was cheerfully innocent. His eyes roved from one boy in the group to another, finally set on an Eric. Huh, Eric? Nothing, Griff, Eric murmured. All right, then, Griffin replied. He probed around the edges of his eye with a thumb, flicked away at the offending dust particle. Everyone watched him. Waiting uneasily, Griffin cupped his mouth with a hand, and he whispered to Eric, Just be careful what you talk about, he warned. It's hard to keep secrets around here. Griffin winked at Eric, then gave that big Hollywood smile and swept the hair from his eyes. The bell rang. The group of boys began to disperse. Griffin tugged on Eric's shirts. Hey, by the way, Eric, I listened to the CDs of yours. I have to tell you, buddy, very weak. Those are some lame tunes. What is your father, a florist or something? Hearing it, a few boys laughed. Eric's face flushed. Oh, I remember now, Griffin said gleefully, wagging a finger. He's a freak. For that moment, Eric's senses shut down. Instead of sight, the world went dark, like a curtain falling across his eyes. Instead of sound, he heard only the mad pounding of his heart, the saggy swoosh of blood running through his body. Fists clenched. He wanted only to lash out, to hit something, to make it hurt. What are you going to do? Punch me? Griffin taunted, grinning. Don't you know that violence never gets you anywhere? Cody stepped in close. Eric shook his head. The fury passed. They had attracted the attention of Mrs. Diaz and another noon aide. You're not worth it, Eric declared. Griffin, aware of his audience, held out open palms. Dude, look at me. I'm just the guy who's standing here. You are the one who's all hot and bothered. The guy you really want to punch is your old man. Bork, bork, chicken! Sinjay clucked, still eager to see a fight. I'll be seeing you around, Eric, Griffin said. His smile was like a pure beam of distilled sunlight. His long lashes blinked, his cheeks pinkened. He wore a perfect mask of kindness and light.